Thanks, Jim. I love that song, too, man. It just gets me going in the morning. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm extremely happy to be a part of this company. I believe we've got a really bright future ahead of us. We're about to embark on a journey together, a journey to greater profitability. The road to get there will not be easy, but I truly believe it is achievable. I've been with churches for a little over two months now, and I've been spending my time assessing our current situation, devising a plan for moving us forward, and building the inf infrastructure we need to take us there. By the time you leave this convention, I want you to feel confident that we have the people, the processes, and the vision to successfully move this brand forward. But first, it's fair to ask why. Why do we need to move this brand forward? What is our motivation? I'd like to share with you my motivation. My son Brandon is 13. My daughter Maggie will be 12 next month. My wife Nancy and I have been together, been married for 19 years. And for uh, the purposes of today's discussion, shall remain ageless. She's not here, but she'd appreciate me saying that. That's my motivation. That's why I work hard every day, like all of you do. And that's why I want to move this brand forward, for my family and for yours. Family and the traditions we create are what define us, who we are, where we come from, and what we believe. It grounds us and gives us a sense of values that we carry with us every day. By moving this brand forward, we create opportunities for those around us. No, this isn't one of Jim Hyatt's reimaged restaurants. <laughs> it's as close as I could come to find a picture of the barbecue shack my grandfather operated and ran on uh, Route 66 uh, in Sullivan, Missouri during the Great Depression. My other grandfather was a cab driver in St. Louis. I share this so that you know that my roots are humble. I've worked hard my entire life and I'm not about to let up now. You see, my entire economic future is tied up in churches. I'm here because I want us all to succeed together. I don't come from a wealthy family, and trust me, I can't sing or dance. This is it for me, right? We will be successful. And as my wife likes to remind me, failure is not an option. But as I stand here today in Las Vegas, let me assure you, I am not a gambling man. Actually, I'm rather methodical in my approach. The opportunity to grow the church's brand is not a risky bet for me. You see, when I evaluate restaurant opportunities, I look for two things, great people and a great product. When I met Jim and the rest of the leadership team, I realized that this was a group of people that had the same values that I do. Under Jim Hyatt's leadership, we've put together a great team of leaders across all specialties, operations, supply chain, R&D, training, finance, development, international, people who know this business and have spent their entire careers working in and for restaurants. In my career, I've been fortunate to work for some great brands like Applebee's, Arby's, Longhorn Steakhouse, the Capitol Grill, and Wendy's. I can assure you that we have the talent to compete with anyone. The second thing I look for is a great core product, a product that is a cut above the competition. And when our chicken is done right, nobody does it better. I believe we have the best bone-in chicken widely available today. And so I signed up. And I felt privileged, for I was being asked to join a company with a vast and impressive history, 60 years, as a matter of fact. I was being asked to help lead a company and the franchisees who have invested an incredible amount, in some cases, everything in this brand that we share. Our destinies are intertwined. I know that the hopes and dreams you have for your families are dependent on what we can accomplish together. This is a responsibility I will never take lightly. You just heard Jim lay out our goal for this brand, 
the surge. I love that. Years from now, and I believe this, everything, ooh, people will look back and see this as a defining time in our history to grow average unit volumes by $200,000 over the next four years. That's an aggressive goal, as our current system average is just a little over $700,000. So we're talking about an increase of 28.5%. Aggressive, but achievable. But before we try to move this business forward, I wanted to try and understand how we got here in the first place. So I was looking at a reel of ads the other day, going back to 1990, very similar to the ones you all saw last night. What struck me was that the entire reel, with the exception of two ads, were price point ads for bone-in chicken. There was one spot for uh, chicken wings and another for barbecue chicken. So it hit me that these discount offers on bone-in chicken were not the product of a recent strategy, but rather a strategy that had been around for a very long time. About the same time, we were getting in orders for a current promotion, chicken crun or tender crunchers. And the majority of you passed on the opportunity to promote this product because you wanted to feature a price point on bone-in chicken. You felt that promoting the discounted offer on bone-in chicken was the more prudent choice in running your business. Fair enough. That's what good business people do. They make rational decisions based on the information at hand. So I asked myself, maybe we hadn't given you the right information and a logical framework for making this decision. I want to correct that today. To achieve our goal, we need to all be operating off the same strategy. So let's discuss our options. There are two broad strategies we can employ. The first is to offer a competitive product at a lower price. I'd argue that's what we've been doing here for years. The problem with the strategy is that to make it work, you have to have the scale to be the low cost provider. And we are simply not big enough to make that happen. We cannot consistently buy raw materials, mainly chicken, at lower prices than do KFC and Popeyes. Barry Barnett, our head of purchasing, is really good, but he's not a miracle worker. We simply do not have the size to execute against this strategy. But being enterprising business people, we look for a workaround, right, a way to beat the system. And we found it in dark meat chicken. As many of you know, there is a gap in the price between white meat chicken and dark meat chicken. So we began to discount the lower cost item to offer our customers a low cost meal. This worked as long as our competitors didn't play the same game. Unfortunately, we are seeing Popeyes increasing the amount of dark meat offers they are doing. And I'm sure many of you are seeing that in your markets as well. Additionally, the price of chicken keeps going up. Our cost on dark meat chicken has gone up 24% since 2009 and it's forecast to go higher next year. We have significant exposure in our business because we are dependent on being the lowest cost offer in the market. That means we must pursue a different strategy, a strategy of offering superior products at competitive prices. And by superior, I don't necessarily mean higher quality, but rather innovative new products and flavors that consumers can't get anywhere else. Our competitive advantage will come from our ability to innovate. Let me say that again. Our competitive advantage will come from our ability to innovate. We already have a great bone-in product. Is that not why you joined churches in the first place? We intend to increase the quality and quantity of new product ideas in our system. Our customers, while economically challenged, are eating at other restaurants. We need to make it really difficult for them to choose to go to a Popeyes or a KFC or a McDonald's, to give them a reason for visiting us other than price. We can do that by offering up unique tastes that they can't find anywhere else. Our purple pepper jelly is an example of that. So to reach our goal, we need to transition you're going to hear me talk about this a lot. We need to transition from being a discounter of bone-in chicken to a purveyor of quality, unique tastes. The quality halo we will create will make our bone-in chicken that much more desirable. We won't just be the place to get a great deal. 
we will be the restaurant our customers choose to get a great meal. Our rallying cry internally is from great deals to great meals. Managing this transition from great deals to great meals will be, in the words of uh, Donald Trump, the art of the deal. Now we've talked broadly about our strategy, which is pursuing superior products at a competitive price. And we've talked about our motivation for doing what needs to be done. Now I'd like to get into sp specifics on how we intend to transform the business. We started with research to get a deep understanding of our core customer, because that's where it all begins and ends, with customers who are willing to trade their hard-earned dollars for an experience with us. And that's what it means to be a marketing-driven company. We ask, what is it people want? And we deliver it to them. So to find out what they want, we sent a team of researchers into the neighborhoods where our best customers live. And this is what we found. Customers who visit churches three or more times a month are 30% of all users. They are 45% of all transactions. And they are 55% of all revenue. These heavy users are a disproportionate source of our business. They love us, and they have the ability to move markets. They're most responsive to new products, most willing to help improve the business, and most forgiving when we fail them. In short, they're the reason we exist. We segmented these heavy users further and found that African Americans accounted for about 40% of this audience. This sub-segment of heavy users visits us 6.9 times a month. The Hispanic subsegment is also about 40% of our audience and visits us on average 4.9 times a month. 71% of our target audience lives within two miles of a church's. Keep that in mind at the local store marketing breakout session on Thursday. You won't want to miss that. Our heavy users are prolific category users. They use QSR restaurants like grocery stores, frequenting up to 46 times per month. Churches is the destination for only 10% of these. That is our real opportunity. The neighborhoods they live in are, for the most part, economically challenged. And for our customers, not surprisingly, life is hard. Not only do they struggle to make ends, make ends meet, but they struggle to keep their families together. Faith, family, and community are very important. TVs are a mainstay in the household. They want their family close where they know they'll be safe. Protecting and providing for the family is what keeps them going. So we coined a term. We call them providers with a capital P. You'll see that a lot. And we crafted our company mission statement around this idea. We are for the providers, their families, and their communities. So the first step was to define our core customer, and we've done that. The next step was to define the competitive scent. When we held focus groups earlier this year uh, with our uh, core customer, our core churches users, and we asked them, when you, don't go, when you go out to eat and you don't eat at churches, where are you going? We expected that they'd play back to us KFC and Popeyes. Do you know who they said? They said McDonald's, Taco Bell, Chinese food, convenience stores. That's right, convenience stores. Sure, they mentioned the other chicken competitors, but the learning here is that when they don't go to churches, our customer's first choice isn't necessarily another chicken chain. It's anyone who is conveniently located and competitively priced. That's our customer's frame of reference. Anyone who is conveniently located and competitively priced. Knowing that, we then must decide how to compete in this space. We call that our competitive point of differentiation. It's kind of marketing speak. And you know what our customers told us? Authentically Southern. This is the space, the bin, if you will, that we occupy in the consumer's mind. Their perception of Southern is our guardrail. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be in a traditionally southern state for this to be effective for you. 
consumers all over the country have perceptions of what it means to be Southern. Our challenge is to manage these perceptions and deliver an experience our customer believes is authentically Southern. So we developed what we call a social contract with our consumers in the U.S. It reads, Church's Chicken is the trusted restaurant in my community preparing fresh, authentically Southern, and complete meals for everyday low prices, which I rely on to provide for my family. And this is the statement that then drove, drove the development of the You Bring It Home as the selling idea. You Bring It Home honors and celebrates the provider. It resonates with the provider and it reinforces their position as the person who makes all things possible in their home. Let's take a look at a few of these ads from our current campaign. Baby. Hey. Wow, let me help you with uh, this stuff. Thank you. Oh, so oh. welcome. Guys, I've got churches. Daddy, 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 daddy. Well, I've got the apple pie. Everything's better when you bring home Church's. And with Church's new 9 for 99 value menu, you can pick up nine of our signature items for just 99 cents each or nine mixed pieces of our hand-breaded chicken for $8.99. Church's, you bring it home. Esta es mi familia y a la hora de la cena todos quieren algo diferente. Por eso mi secreto es Churches. Sergio prefiere los sándwiches de pollo. Para Beto, biscuits. Para Benja, bombers. A la abuela Tere le encantan las tiritas de pollo. Y Ana. Ana, árbol, árbol, manzana, manzana, pay de manzana. Es el nuevo menú de 99 centavos de Churches. Elige entre nueve opciones desde 99 centavos cada una. O aprovecha nueve piezas variadas por solo 8.99. Churches, llévales algo bueno. You girls hungry? I brought churches. Go mom, go mom, you brought home churches. You're the best mom in the world. Fried chicken. Uh. And those honey butter biscuits. Woo! Brown chicken, brown cow. Chicken, brown, brown, brown. Uh-uh. Let's eat. Everything's better when you bring home churches. Right now, pick up three tender strips and fries for just $2.99. Or nine mixed pieces of our hand-breaded chicken for just $9.99. Churches, you bring it home. A ver, saluden a la abuela a todos. Hola, Hola tesoros. ¡Qué maravilla! Ay, Sonia, parece que pasaste todo el día en la cocina. Tendré que preocuparme menos. Mira cuánto pollo y los biscuits. Los jalapeños Abuela, ha sido de no, 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 no. Cuenta con Churches todos los días para complacer a todos, como el menú de 99 centavos. Nueve opciones desde 99 centavos. O llévate 10 piernas y muslos por solo 7.99. Churches, llévales algo bueno. Me too. I love Sundays. Me too. I'm thinking churches for lunch. Me too. What would you like, sweetie? Tender strips. Me too. Come into churches and pick up three hand-breaded tender strips plus fries for just $2.99. And for a limited time, try our new smoky honey mustard or purple pepper sauce. And you can always find great deals on your family's favorite chicken. Churches, you bring it home. Estoy agotado. Uh, yo también. Ya la arreglé. Yo también. Estoy pensando en churches para el almuerzo. Yo también. ¿Qué vas a querer? Tiritas de pollo. Yo también. Ven a churches y llévate tres tiritas de pollo más papas por $2.99. Y prueba nuestras nuevas salsas Smoky Honey Mustard o Purple Pepper. Encuentra grandes ofertas en el pollo favorito de tu familia. Churches, llévales algo bueno. All right, thank you. I heard a, more, a little more laughter for the uh, Hispanic spots. Uh, I don't know why that was, but uh, it's good, it's good. So we've taken the same process to Latin America and Asia. And you'll notice a few differences in our social contracts in these regions around the world. First, churches is a trusted friend. Now that may sound a little Pollyannish, Pollyannish to uh, American ears, but it rings true in Latin America and Asia. They aren't quite as jaded as uh, US consumers. Also, notice that we are an escape from the realities of everyday life. If you've ever traveled to some of these countries, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The sheer population density in these cities where we operate can be daunting. 
Consumers in the Americas look for a stress-free environment, while in Asia, they're looking to rebalance a hectic life. You'll also notice that in both the Americas and Asia, we are a reward. American QSR is still very aspirational in Latin America and Asia, and we compete quite well in this arena. When I was running international marketing at Wendy's, I considered churches and Texas chicken to be a strong competitor to Wendy's outside of the US. Keep that in mind when Kirk shows you some of the great new products we're doing internationally. This product innovation allows us to compete on a much higher level globally than we do in the US. This is due in large part to the cooking platforms and physical plants our international franchisees have invested in. Is it paying off for them? Well, internationally, our year-to-date same-store sales are up 9%. I'd like to give a round of applause to Zach Coleus and his team and our international franchisees for bringing it home every day. Now, Jim described a surge, a four-year surge in sales that we intend to make happen. Our strategy is to transition from being a discounter of bone-in chicken to being a brand that provides authentically Southern meals at competitive prices to an audience we call the provider. To do this, we need an action plan. Here's mine. One, lay a strong foundation to build upon. This, is inclu this includes people and processes. Two, we're gonna fill the new product pipeline with products. We simply can't have too many. We need to develop new platforms and effectively merchandise what we have. Three, manage the marketing calendar to reflect the realities of our business. Balance new product offers with price pointed discounts and use promotions to drive traffic. Four, look for positive ROIs, return on investments, on marketing investments. Five, think and act like a system. That's why we're all here today. We need to leverage what scale we have. Let's talk about each of these in more detail. I'm an analytical guy. I believe you can't manage what you can't measure. And our infrastructure in the marketing analytics and consumer insights uh, areas had been dismantled several years ago. So I'm rebuilding that. I've asked Pallavi Reddy, Reddy to move into a newly created position, Director of Marketing Analytics. Pallavi will report to me and have two direct reports. She will be responsible for identifying key metrics and establishing a schedule of reporting on them. We need to do a better job of benchmarking against the industry identifying emerging trends, and analyzing our own performance, and Pallavi will be a great resource for the system. When I arrived, we had a tremendous amount of new product testing going on in our two largest company store markets, McAllen and San Antonio. I very quickly put a stop to that. A test, by its very nature, is risky. Some products are successful, others are not. As a system, we want these two markets to generate as much sales as they can. When they do, they contribute more to the ad fund, and we all benefit from that. We're doing some things on the front end of the product development process to compensate for the loss of these two as test markets, and I'll discuss this process with you shortly. We also just added some additional discipline to our product testing process. We were pushing so many items through our pipeline that we struggled to find clean reads on data. We would have more variables than test cells. This means that when we evaluated a promotion, we didn't know what to attribute the change to. Now we are only changing one variable per test cell. Thus changes and results can now tie back to that single variable that changed. As Jim mentioned, we're also working hard to clean up the ad fund. Our accounting of the fund had been hampered by the fact that we have 471 accounts in it. You'll hear that number come up again later. Sherry Alsh has done a wonderful job of providing a clear line of sight into it, and we believe we have a path forward. Sherry, Robert Dimson, and myself will be sharing this with you later this morning. Sherry Alsh has also been spearheading a couple of other foundational elements for us. 
One, we've been working on a standardized contracts for our marketing partners. Now this might sound pretty mundane to you until you consider the risk and the possible cost of not being buttoned up in this arena. Additionally, Sherry is leading a team in selecting an on-demand point of purchase partner. Starting in 2013, you will be able to order any additional point of purchase materials you need directly from the printer, cutting down the need to call into the marketing department. And the last process I'll mention is the process of working with CIFA. We currently hold calls at least monthly with them to discuss the business. We share with them key initiatives and solicit their feedback. For example, we held several meetings on the value menu. Based on feedback from CIFA, we removed the biscuit from the leg or thigh offering, as well as the tender strip offering. More recently, we have discussed a path forward regarding the ad fund, and we're currently looking at ways to make our window clings easier to read from the street. Now for me, another benefit of these CIFA meetings is getting to know the members of the committee. I personally have been working with Mike Knobloch on his shyness issues. I see you sitting over there, Mike. For those of you who don't know Mike, he's a really quiet and reserved guy. He has a lot of really great ideas, but I gotta really pull them out of him. So if only he could learn to be a little more assertive. Thanks, Mike. The next item on my action plan is product innovation. You heard Jim discuss this too. I believe product innovation is the key to our success. It's what drives our industry and the most successful brands are the ones who do it best. McDonald's growth over the past decade has been fueled by product innovation. Their beverage platform has completely transformed how people think about McDonald's. So Kurt Weisner and myself have been looking at our product development process and we discussed how to get more ideas into the pipeline and how to test those. We partnered with a company out of Boston called Athenova. They use evolutionary algorithms to find the top concepts in very large spaces of ideas. Think about it as survival of the fittest of ideas. We are getting ready to test over 100 million new product ideas. That's right, over 100 million. Statistically, we have a much better chance of finding a new product in a pile of 100 million new ideas than we do in a pile of 100 ideas. Now we do this by building a content matrix and then the Athenova software builds unique concepts in real time and exposes those to consumers. Consumers pick which of the several concepts they like best and the software learns what they like and it evolves these concepts over time until they've produced the most preferred concepts. Now the ideas are only as good as the inputs going into the matrix. So we've invited Athenova to be here with us and to take your ideas for menu development. I invite you to stop by the marketing booth and have them input your ideas into our studies. You might be responsible for the next great product idea at churches. We're starting to think a lot in terms of food platforms. You heard Jim mention 11 platforms. Seafood is one of those. We're getting ready to go into test on seafood. We've selected a couple of markets to run this year's Lent program in October and November. The purpose of this test is to determine if seafood can be sold year round for us. If we determine from the test that we can sell seafood year round, then we will begin to explore what the entire platform should look like. We're also looking at Texas chicken as an addition to the bone-in chicken platform. As this product doesn't have breading, it gives us the ability to offer different flavor profiles using different sauces or different rubs. How about a chipotle lime Texas chicken or a jalapeno honey Texas chicken? The possibilities are endless. Signature sandwiches are a huge opportunity for us. We believe the Big Tex could be the foundation of a signature sandwich line. The Big Tex features two of our chicken tenders on Texas toast, 
with lettuce, mayonnaise, and pickles. In company market tests, it ranged from 4.6% to 6.2% of transactions, earning it a green light on consumer acceptance. It uses an existing protein that we already have in the restaurants, and it should increase the velocity on the chicken tenders. We have tested this product and find it much easier to execute than the southern style chicken sandwich. Thus, we gave it a green light on operational acceptance. Finally, with a food cost of 92 cents and a penny profit of $1.57 at a suggested selling price of $2.49, we gave it a green light on financial acceptance. We think our value platform is an integral part of our strategy going forward. I think in terms of products, of offering products across a range of prices, and our current offerings are a great start. Think of these items as snack items or a la carte items. The word value carries a lot of baggage in our industry. While I think we need to have some product offerings at 99 cents for the near future, we are not hemmed in by that price point, and we will test items in the $1 to $2 range. Another key component to our product success is optimizing our menu boards. Making sure we have the right products in the right places at the right prices. We can't be scared to eliminate or revisit those items that are taking up valuable real estate on our menu boards, but not giving us back the returns in our cash registers. Our partners at Coca-Cola recently funded a market research study for us that looked at menu board layouts. And we're going to go test their findings later this year. Our product strategy needs to account for pricing as well. We shouldn't evaluate products in a vacuum. A consumer's expectation of quality on a 99 cent item is different than their expectation on a 399 item. So to be best in class, and Kurt will talk about this a lot, to be best in class means different things at different price points. Chopped and formed might be perfectly acceptable at lower price points, while whole muscle is the price of admission at higher price points. As for pricing on existing menu items, we recommend that franchisees take scheduled and proactive price increases that allow you to offset rising commodity costs without pricing yourself or your products out of the market. The key is to try and find the recommended price point for each item on the menu that maximizes revenue. And we are currently exploring ways of finding the right price for each item on our menu. Our challenge is to find a cost-effective way of doing this. As we reevaluate our menu, we need to design a continuum of prices within different need states, family, individual, and snack time, so that everyone can find the right products, the right prices on every visit. My third, act of, uh, third action item is to actively manage the marketing calendar to drive profitable traffic. You heard Jim mention that earlier. Our marketing calendar will continue to focus on the provider and how churches helps them to deliver for their families with freshly prepared food at a good value. This is a preliminary look at our 2013 calendar. Our plan is to kick off the year with a trio of sandwiches value priced around $1.59. We'll then move into our traditional Lent program, one of the highest sales times of the year. This year we experienced a big fall off in sales coming out of Lent as Popeyes brought out an aggressive price point on bone-in chicken, and we launched the value menu. Next year, we are planning to bring an aggressive bone-in offer at this time to try and maintain the momentum coming out of Lent. Then we plan on bringing back Texas chicken, this time with a half chicken and Texas seasoning. We'll probably follow that up with either Flamin' Tenders or Flamin' Crunchers to roll over this year's Tender Cruncher promotion. Then we're planning to move into a Big Tex line extension before wrapping up the year with our traditional bundle offers during the holiday season. Obviously, this calendar is subject to change, but it is a priority of mine to start working further ahead on the calendar. One of the things I noticed soon after getting here is that sales really fluctuate within the month. So we took a look at average weekly sales in relation to the first of the month. Many of our customers rely on government assistance for some or all of their income. 
This means that we traditionally see much stronger sales during the early weeks of the month, with sales decreasing throughout the month until week four, four weeks after the first, when sales are 87% of what they are the first week. We're exploring loyalty programs and other marketing ideas that specifically address the softer sales period, allowing our guests to stretch their dollars when there's more month than money. We're also looking to reconstruct the calendar so that our messages change throughout the month to coincide with our customers' economic situations. Early in the month, we'll advertise the innovative LTO products to entice our guests when they have a little extra money. As we get later in the month, we'll change our strategy to better address the value and price needs that our guests have as their money gets a little tighter by discounting bone-in offers. Today, this might look like the calendar on top, where the first third of the month is LTO advertising, and the second two-thirds of the month are bone-in discount offers. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Look, this is just trying to match up our sales cycle, right, with uh, match up our calendar with our kind of natural sales cycle. In the future, as we begin to build equity in offering new taste experiences, we should be able to transition this calendar to be two-thirds LTO and one-third bone-in discount offers. This is a process. To give us the flexibility to do this, we've removed all the bone-in offers from our limited time offer spots. Here's an example. Whether it's after practice or a trip to the mall, your family can always count on you to serve them the food they love. That's because with new Tender Crunchers, now anytime is the perfect time for churches. Tender Crunchers are boneless, hand-breaded, all-white meat chicken served with your choice of four tasty sauces. And for a limited time, try them with our crispy fries for only $2.99. So, even when you're not around the table, you can still serve your family a meal you can feel good about with new Tender Crunchers. Only at Churches. You bring it home. Los nuevos Tender Crunchers de Churches son perfectos para disfrutarse en cualquier momento. Ya sea después de un partido o antes de ir de compras, tu familia siempre puede contar contigo para comer algo bueno. Son trozos de carne blanca de pechuga de pollo, sazonados a mano y vienen con una de nuestras cuatro ricas salsas. Pruébalos por tiempo limitado con papas crujientes por $2.99. Así que aun cuando tu familia no puede estar sentada alrededor de una mesa, les puedes seguir dando una buena comida con los nuevos Tender Crunchers. Solo en Churches. Llévales algo bueno. you will now be able to control the mix of new product messages and bone-in price point messages in your market by how you traffic in the creative. Additionally, we've simplified our production and trafficking process by moving from two offers in a 30-second spot to a single uh, offer in a 15-second spot. Let me illustrate this for you. In the past, if we had 10 family offers for the system and 10 individual offers, then we would produce a commercial for each combination of offers. The amount of commercials is multiplicative based on the offers. In this example, we would have produced 100 variations of offers. Going forward, we will produce 10 15 second family offer commercials and 10 15 second individual offer commercials. This means we're now producing 20 versions instead of 100, saving us production time, talent fees, and headaches. This year, we've taken the marketing calendar down to seven events from 13 events as originally planned last year. In a system the size of ours, 13 events are just too many. We don't have the media weights to be able to ramp up sales on a new promotion quickly enough if we were moving on to a the next promotion so quickly. Seven events gives us the right amount of time to communicate with our customers our new product news and get a return on our investment in our creative assets. And since I'm on the subject of ROI on marketing investments, let's discuss media efficiency. This is one area we need to take a hard look at in the upcoming year. We are challenged in this regard because the cost of television advertising has risen coster faster than the sales in those markets. When this happens, markets move from media efficient to media inefficient. The chart behind me shows the weekly same store sales needed, uh, the increase needed to break even on a typical one week media investment. 
the increase needed for radio is lower, owing to the lower cost of radio compared with television. But this is a conversation we need to have in your co-ops as we plan for 2013. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we need to think and act like a system. For example, Tender Crunchers, our current calendar event, is only being offered in 380 of 1,250 restaurants. And this product has really been successful for us in our company markets. In test, Tender Crunchers was 4% of sales mix. Now at the same time we started our promotion, KFC began promoting their chicken bites, and I think we benefited from the increased awareness. Chicken Tenders is currently 6% of our sales mix. But we cannot have off, uh, markets not offering our innovative new products. To that end, we're going to change how we treat POP uh, materials for national promotions. Campaign LTO POP materials will no longer be treated as an individual store expense. Beginning in 2013, LTO POP materials will be treated like national media and all restaurants will receive a POP kit. POP kit. Our POP is currently the only way we can ensure consistency in our marketing messages across our system. It is our national media. To be successful, we need 100% participation in all calendar events. Your co-op can vote to air the TV spots you think will air, that you want to air in your market that will drive traffic to your restaurants. But once they get there, they need to see our current limited time offer. This is the only way we can move from great deals to great meals. In closing, I want to reiterate how excited I am to be here. Earlier, Jim shared with you a number of things he believes in. I want to leave you with one of my own. I believe our best days are ahead of us, and I believe we will move from great deals to great meals and achieve our financial goals. I look forward to sharing this journey with you. Thank you.